I have a question. Well, what's that? Why, given every other possible option, does a man choose the life of a paid assassin? Well, it was that or the priesthood. <laughs> And that was a clip from Spectre, the latest installment in the James Bond franchise, with Daniel Craig once again starring as 007. Joining us now with his review is Wall Street Journal film critic Joe Morgenstern. Welcome, Joe. Thank you. With Spectre, we have a return of Skyfall director Sam Mendes, as well as most of the writing team from that film. So does Spectre live up to these expectations? It does not, and it's really a puzzlement why it doesn't. Um, there's, there's a scene in the movie that uh, I have to tell you about, and I don't think it'll spoil anything. It's a scene in which Daniel Craig has his head caught in a torture machine, and a little drill bit drills into that temple, and then another little drill bit drills into that one. It's a really dumb scene, like much of the stuff in the movie, dumb for at least two reasons. One is that the, the drilling into his skull seems to have no after effects. The other is that it bears an unfortunate relation similarity to the scene in Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times where Charlie is caught in a feeding machine that goes berserk. Oh, no, that does not uh, you sound know, good. <laughs> I, I'm, it doesn't. And I'm going on about this scene because it's very much what I came to feel as this movie lumbered on, that there were little drill bits going into that part of my skull and that part of my skull. Oh. So, it's a bafflingly bad movie, and as you say, it was directed by Sam Mendes and written by three of the writers who wrote the exemplary Skyfall. Mm, so, aside from all of that, did you at least enjoy Daniel Craig's possibly last performance as James Bond? No, I did not, because it's clear that he wasn't enjoying himself. No one seems to be enjoying themselves in this film. And the tip-off to what's wrong with it is Christoph Waltz, who plays the arch-villain who calls himself Oberhauser. If you remember, Christoph Waltz in Inglorious Bastards was so... in the. Uh, the Quentin Tarantino film, was so deliciously malicious and funny. And he tries to do something of the same here, but it's, it's a tamped down, essentially joyless performance that I must say is in keeping with the rest of the film. I mean, the, 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 the effects are big and the car chases are elaborate but they're uninspired, and I must say the whole film is uninspired. Oh, Joe, what about the new Bond girl, Lea Seydoux? She's a wonderful actress. She comes from uh, blue is the warmest color. She isn't given much of a chance to, to do any acting mm -hmm. except for one brief soliloquy in bed, and I hasten to say she does that in bed by herself. <laughs> now, Joe, past... Bond films have featured plots to contaminate the gold in Fort Knox and threats of nuclear weapons. Without giving too much away, the new plot touches on the issue of surveillance. Do you think this new villainous plot was handled well? No, the issue of surveillance is so abstract and old news. I mean, yes, we are surveyed by cameras everywhere. It's not a very dramatic device, but the really central problem with the film was the decision to recapitulate scenes and themes from old Bond films. That instantly conveys a sense that they've run out of new ideas. It's impossible to know whether they decided to do this after new ideas didn't work or whether this was just a bad idea that they weren't able to make work. Yeah. Whatever the case, the result is a sense that deep fatigue has set in. Oh, that's such a shame. So wait for the DVD or skip it all together and hope for a new Bond. Uh, skip it all together and go to a wonderful movie this week called Spotlight. Great. All right. Well, we'll look that one up. Joe, thank you so much for that. Thank you.